Hey there. If you are watching this in real time or listening, depending on the medium that you are using to interact with this content, you are in the beginning stages of summer. Now, if you're like watching this video in real time as it was delivered to my email list, this is the last day of school for my kiddos. If you're listening to it on the podcast, then this is a couple weeks ago by now, but either way, summer is here. Summer is new. And gosh, do you remember that feeling? That feeling of like having a schedule open, having the world at your fingertips, having like no obligations and just unlimited freedom. I remember summer as a kid being like bike riding and going to the pool and lemonade. It was like Kool-Aid lemonade packets, like going to the library, getting books. Like I have a distinct memory of reading Little House on the Prairie in a little like rectangle of sunshine in the early summer, like eating a little Debbie Swiss cake roll, drinking some Kool-Aid lemonade and just like living my best life as a third grader. <laughs> and I think about that as my kids' perspective, because we have a going into seventh grade, going into fifth, going into fourth and going into first grader this summer. And I just like, I try to put myself back in their shoes and think about how you have this expansive time where you don't have homework. You probably have chores. You still have to listen to your parents, but otherwise it's like the world is literally your oyster. What are we going to do with these next three months? And I remember just, the magic, that excitement, the like, just the giddiness as we got into this season. Now, as a parent, as a, an adult, as we look at summer, our feelings can very much flip flop from those days when we were kids, right? And we can be bogged down with like, oh, more kids at home, fewer times to ourselves, more groceries that we have to buy and keep stocked in the pantry, more running around to ball games, soccer practice, kids camps. Maybe we have to have daycare or babysitter. And so for the adult perspective on summer, it could be anything but that relaxing, freedom-filled, expansive time. For us, it can feel a little more pressurized, a little more chaotic, and a little more Ugh, then, <gasps> but this year, something that I did at the beginning of the year, and to be totally transparently honest, like I haven't been great at this, but one of the things that I set out as my intention for 2023 was to live, to be present, to make choices from a place of what if rather than a I should mindset. And so as Ryan and I, my husband and I were talking about how we wanted 2023 to go and how we wanted to live this year, one of the things that we decided was to not get summer childcare because I wanted to be present with the kids. The last couple of summers, as they got older, I took the summer months as my time to like play catch up, if you will. And we get a babysitter or a daycare. For, well, we have the same babysitter for like multiple years. She is amazing. Um, and at the beginning of the summer, I'd be like, I'm only working until three. And then pretty soon three became four, which became five, which became 530. And I was taking on more projects. I was taking more time to work because I was like, I might as well. Natalie's here. And at the end of the summer, I would look back and be like, well, well that was fun, I guess. I didn't spend as much time with the kids as I wanted to, but I got a lot of work done. And so thinking about those last couple of summers, I really was like, no, I want to be intentional and I want to make the most of our time. And so this year we don't have daycare, we don't have childcare. So I need to be very strategic in how I am spending my time here. And what I know about a lot of female business owners and entrepreneurs out there is that you probably set out for business for the same reason I did. So you could have this gift of time freedom. So you could take your kids to the pool on a summer afternoon or run to the doctor real quick if they're sick. But as we look at summer and we think about it from an adult perspective of all of these things we have to do, it can feel like we have so much less time instead of so much more. And this summer, I wanted to feel that expanse. I wanted to feel that open-endedness. And so 
what I decided was that for this summer, I'm going to say yes to less, not more. I'm going to do less working hours. I'm only going to work mornings as much as possible for June and July, for sure, probably into August. But that way the afternoons are for the kids. I'm going to do less shoulds and I'm going to be strategic about my commitments and releasing the rest. I've already stepped down from a couple of boards that I was a member of last year. I've already really honed in on some of those contractual obligations with clients that had kind of expanded scope. I'm saying less to just the busyness and like the motion of work instead of those real solid action, action-packed objectives and action-filled items and tasks, I'm saying less to filler. So you might have seen like my marketing in recent months has been pretty sparse because I wanted what I put out for you guys to be intentional and to be valuable. And I didn't want it to come from a space of just taking up room in your feed. And I'm going to continue that this summer. I'm going to just get to the heart of what's true and share what's going on and what you care about instead of just creating to have more stuff put out there. And if you like me want to say yes to less this summer, one thing I think you can start with is really streamlining your marketing from the get-go. And so here today, we are going to talk about how you can stay cool for the summer, which is a program that I had last summer of 2022. And it was so fun, but I found myself coming back to it because I was like, you know, these concepts are still the same for 2023 with just some minor tweaking. But wasn't when I was looking at it for myself and my own usage, I was like, we need to resurrect this. We need to bring it back. So here it is for your viewing pleasure or for your listening prep pleasure, cool for the summer and how you can really balance your business's marketing in these busy summer months. So if you are listening on the podcast, head over to my YouTube because this video is available and you can see the slides and you can get access to the workbook. Um, If you are watching this video, hey, head over to the links so that you can get that printable workbook for yourself and you can print off the slide presentation too. All right, I'm going to share my screen here. All right, cool for the summer. So as I look at these slides that I prepared almost a year ago, a lot has changed for my business. I have changed a lot and evolved a lot as a person, but the core of my work, the core of what I do still comes back to those pillars of my business and of my brand. A, that I believe small towns are awesome places to be. B, that I think women in small towns get shit done. C, I really do think the future is for women who are self-employed to be able to create the futures that they envision for themselves. And D, I think that connecting online is the way that we can build these businesses and build these connections that allow our businesses, our towns, and ourselves to grow and thrive. So even if my podcast has changed a name, its name since I last created these slides, even if I feel like I'm an entirely different person. Even if I look back at the last 12 months and look and see like all of these ways, which I may have quote unquote failed. I also look at the last 12 months as, wow, look at what I've learned. Look how I've grown. Look how I've evolved. Look what I think now and look what's, look how I'm different in all the right ways. And so I want you to really reflect on your last 12 months as well. How are you the same as you were as we look at June 2022 to June 2023? How are you different? How is your business the same? How is your business different? And really like give yourself grace and credit for growing and expanding and evolving over the course of that time. Because as you and I both know, not only do we change as people, but dang, our society changes too. And Oh, okay. This is a little side note, but I got a memory on my Snapchat the other day and it was reminding me of like what life was like in 2020 at this time and what 
we were doing and how we were quarantining and gas prices of those times and what it costs to go get groceries. And it's just like, oh my gosh, things change so much in a short amount of time. And some, if we don't take active time to reflect on that, we might just miss it entirely. But anyway, okay. So the goals of this presentation is that you can create a marketing plan for your business that fits your lifestyle and your business goals. And we really want to bring a sense of peace to our marketing process instead of this feeling of anxiousness and chaos that social media and digital marketing can sometimes present. And especially with social media in particular, we want to analyze what is working right now so that we're not spending time and precious energy and resources to do things that aren't ultimately going to make that much of a difference or move the needle. All right, so we're going to break it down into four main categories. We're going to talk about clarity, getting clear on what we want to accomplish this summer, two, we're going to catalog what we already have. Three, we're going to identify what we need to create. And four, we're going to talk about how we can get our audience to convert into followers and clients and customers. So the four C's of today are clarity, catalog, create, and convert. So first up, let's get super clear on our goals and what we can feasibly accomplish. At this point, it's really, really great if you have access to that printable workbook so that you can follow along on those pages and you can fill out those boxes as we go. Now, again, if you are listening to the podcast version of this presentation, head over to the links that are on in the show notes so that you can access these slides. Um, and access the workbook. If you are somebody who's watching the presentation, again, you can click the link in the video description or in the email, however you are accessing this presentation, but this is what you will see. You will see a workbook that looks like this. On page one, it says clarity, and it has three boxes that I want you to fill out. All right, let's get back into it. Okay. So as we get clear on what we want this summer to be, kind of like I did at the beginning of the year where I said, I wanted to, I want to live. I want to be present. I want to say yes to less. And I want to really do the things that matter. And this vibe of the day that I, I follow this account on social media and it gives me a like a, a mantra or just a prompt to think on for each day. And this one from May 18th, 2022, just hit me in all the right ways. You're going to realize it one you're going to realize it one day that happiness was never about your job or your degree or being in a relationship. It was never about being like the others. One day you're going to see that happiness was always about the discovery, the hope, the listening to your heart and following it wherever it chose to go. Happiness was always about being kinder to yourself. It was always about embracing the person you were becoming. It was always about you. And so really tap into that feeling and write down what you want for this summer. Now, what I like to do is take a stack of post-it notes, you know, just any post-it notes will do. And I set a timer on my phone for a minute, three minutes, five minutes, however long it takes you to really get into like getting your mind thinking and flowing. For me, I like to do about one to two minutes and I just set that timer and I just say, okay, I'm going to write down every single thing I hope to accomplish. I'm going to do one thought or one idea per post-it note. So as soon as I write that down, I'm going to write it on this post-it. I'm going to rip that post-it off, put it in the done pile and I go to the next and by the end of that one minute or two minutes or however long you want to time yourself for, you're going to have a stack of post-it notes with a bunch of goals. And these could be business related. Maybe it's to grow your email list to a certain number or to get to a follower count on Instagram or to create a reel. Or maybe it's personal. You want to go on a vacation. You want to go to five different local state parks. You know, there's a lot of different ways that you can take this, but I want you to write down all the goals that you have for the summer. And again, that post-it activity is super helpful. 
or you can use the backside of one of these workbook pages as well if you prefer like a bulleted list in one place. So either strategy works here. But on your workbook page, one of the questions on the clarity um, section is what are the three big goals that you have for your business this summer? So after you go through that exercise, whether you choose the post-it strategy or you just want to write it down and journal on it, I want you to identify the big three. What are the big three goals that you have for this summer? And those are going to be kind of our North Star, our guiding light. And it'll help us orient our businesses so that what we're doing as action steps, as well as marketing, will help our ourselves as people and as business owners keep going in that direction. So for example, if my goal is to be more present with my kids this summer, but my schedule is full from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. every single day, that's not going to really align with what I ultimately want this summer to look like and feel like. If I want this summer to feel adventurous and I have all of these adventurous goals written down in front of me, but I also have like a major, major new launch that I've invested thousands of dollars and time in, you know, there might need to be a prioritization of these goals that I am tackling. So I want you to really get clear on how do you want this summer to look? How do you want this summer to feel? And I want you to pick the big three things that mean the most to you personally, professionally, otherwise pick the three big goals that you have and really get clear on what those three main things that you want your summer to revolve around are. Uh, Doesn't it just sound like summer? (laughs) All right. After we get clear on what we want our summer to look like and feel like, now we move into cataloging. Looking at, and this is in regards to our marketing in particular, what works for my audience? So looking at our insights, what do I already have as far as content, as far as programs, as far as assets that I can use? And how can I make things last a little longer so I don't feel like I have to be creating from scratch every single day or every single hour for my business marketing? And I want you to remember, reduce, reuse, recycle, especially if you are a child of the 80s, 90s, early 2000s, you probably remember this mantra, reduce, reuse, recycle, because it was that whole campaign getting us to be better about reusing and repurposing our consumables. So you know, reduce, reuse, recycle on your milk jugs, on your recycling bins. It was just everywhere. But reduce, reuse, recycle can be applied to our marketing as well. So we're going to go through and we're going to use it from this standpoint. Reduce our amount of needing to create from new. Reuse some of those posts or themes or threads or through lines that we have already proven to be successful and use it as we go forward. And sometimes we're just gonna straight up recycle what we've already created and use it again. So first up, what we're gonna do is write down themes and content ideas that have been successful for us in the past, especially if those align with our ultimate goals for the summer. So let's look at your business, for example, and maybe you have a goal of, Let's say if you are someone who is an online service provider and maybe your specialization is social media marketing, but this could be easily adapted to be a copywriter or a podcaster or a virtual assistant, but maybe you have a brand new offer or service and you want to launch that in the summer months. So we might say, all right, I know that my, one of my big goals is to list out these one-on-one service offers and get five people signed up for those offers. So what I want to do is look back in my content that I've already created, already shared, whether that's email, podcast, social media posts, um, speaking engagements, or conversations that I've had with people, and really think about what are some of those themes or what are some of those ideas that seem to really hit the mark and get people 
maybe not just as far as like getting people signed up for things, but also where did you actively see people get excited and ask you questions and engage in conversation around certain things? So for example, I know like if I go into my insights, I will see in like numerical ways, data-driven reports that there are certain kinds of posts that I release for myself or for clients that are more successful than others. And when I look at like the top five posts, I'll be able to see themes. And sometimes this is around certain storylines. So maybe, for example, if I have 30 posts in the last six months, what's going to rise to the top if I sort that out by most successful posts, I might see a theme by... um like what I was talking about. So what will rise to the top is probably things like um, accomplishments, inspiration, motivation that people connected with. And then it made them feel a certain way. So they either commented or liked the post. What I might also see as a theme that emerges is in the content format. So for example, I noticed that people engage more when it's a candid picture of me than when it is a graphic or when it is a real. I might also see themes and content ideas emerge from the, that insights analysis by like saying, okay, what day of the week is the most popular? If my top five posts were all on Mondays, you know, then I'm like, okay, Monday is a great day to post. So those kind of themes can come to the top too when we are in this stage of cataloging, when we're looking at themes that have been successful in the past, and creating new content ideas for the summer going forward. Oops, I went too far. So let's spend a little bit more time here. So I'm going to come back to this concept of reduce, reuse, recycle. If you are on Facebook and on Instagram, you can go to business.facebook.com slash latest to open up Meta Business Suite. So going to span this a little bit more for people who are watching. Again, if you're listening on the podcast, um, maybe go over to YouTube and look at this so you can see this step by step. But what I'm going to do is go to um, my MKM account. And again, I've been kind of sparsely posting over here, so my numbers are not great, but you can restart anytime. All right. So what I'm going to do is in Meta Business Suite here, I'm going to go to this bar graph And that is my insights analysis. And up near the top, what you can see is you have a time frame. So again, if you're watching this on video, you can see exactly where my cursor is. But if you're listening right now, if you're driving or on a walk or something, what you're going to do when you are in Meta Business Suite, when you're on the insights tab, is look at the upper right-hand corner and you can adjust that date range. So I'm going to do a custom date range. And I'm going to start with June 1st, 2022. And I'm going to run that through May 1st of 2023. I'm going to click update. Now you can choose a 30-day insights analysis. You can choose a 90-day. It's totally up to you how you want to run these numbers. But if I really want to extract themes and I want to extract commonalities, I'm going to take a longer uh, time window than a shorter one. So while I'm looking at this, just in a general overview, it gives me a number of how many people or accounts my Facebook page has reached. I have my Instagram account connected too. So it gives me that Instagram number. I can see a graph of like days that are more popular than others. So a good place to start with this um, this number analysis, this data analysis is to look at that graph and say, okay, on these days where there's spikes, what happened here? So I'm going to hover over it. And uh, I had a really high day back in late August. And when I hover over that, it tells me that I had three posts that day. One was a post about a new podcast with a very successful guest. And that would be my friend, Jamie from Rendered Unique. And so if you haven't listened to her podcast yet, you need to. And then I also had a post that was getting into um, the holiday sales season and kind of previewing how you can really ramp your business up for holiday season. So those were a couple of good posts. The one that was most successful though was that new podcast episode. Okay, so now I'm gonna go to the next spike. 
Okay. And that spike was a picture of me. And I was doing a guest speaking event that day and using my Facebook post as like kind of a experiment, if you will. The next spike was a story-based Oh no, it wasn't a story-based post. This was a client feature and it was talking about a new website and brand that we created for a client. My next major spike was in, oh, in February. This was unexpected. And this was when I did a live video about checking your insights. <laughs> so that's those are good ways to look at successful um, spikes and seeing like, what was the content that caused those spikes to happen? Now, if you want to look at this in another way, we can go to, um, we're still here on the insights tab. My second menu off the insights tab, I can look at content and this might help you sort that data to extract themes a little bit better. Again, I do have my Instagram and my Facebook connected. So this makes it really easy to see at a glance what both platforms are doing for my business. So first of all, I'm going to remove ads here and I'm going to remove stories reporting. And I just want to see Facebook and Instagram posts. So when I unclick those arrows, what I'm going to do is see just Facebook and Instagram post results. And I want to sort this by reach. So I'm going to click right here on this arrow and sort it by descending. And again, what rises to the top will help me see themes and it will help me start to say, okay, if I want to make the most of this summer without creating unnecessary fluffy content, if I want to get right to the heart of the matter, this helps me identify what people care about and inform how I'm going to create content going forward. So here's a picture of me. Again, this was a guest speaking event. That was my most successful post of the year. It was a guest speaking event and I was using this as uh, an experiment where I was telling people comment where you're from and then share this post and let's see how far it gets. My next most successful post was featuring an MKM team member, Megan, who's a rock star virtual assistant. Uh, next we have, what is this? This is an Instagram post. If I hover over it, that was a podcast reel. Okay. This next, my fourth most successful was a podcast post. My fifth most successful was a reel about showing up and keep going. This was a client feature, team member, team member, podcast. Okay, so some of the themes of my like top 10 posts are podcast uh, launch days. Those are very successful. Featured MKM team members or featured MKM client work. People really love seeing that. So those are going to be my big three themes. So where can I feature people? That's what I want to do as I'm looking at this summer. So that can help me and I can say, all right, well, what do I already have? So remember that reduce, reuse, recycle. I already have featured team member posts. So can I just reuse those? Maybe I still do this feature on Megan. I can copy and paste that and then set it up for maybe like one team member focus each week or one MKM client focus each week. I can use some of these past posts and just copy and legit up. I can reuse them as like the same exact content that it already is, or I can update it with fresh pictures or fresh copy. But this helps me inform myself by looking at what's already successful and how can I create new content for the summer that's more efficient, but it's still super effective because it's been proven to be effective before. So those are some things I can do. Now, by looking at these themes, I can also say, okay, what are some things I did in the past that were successful? And maybe I can just reuse that same thought process. So again, my podcast seems like they've been very, um, they've been very successful this year in 2023. I said yes to less. So instead of doing weekly podcast episode drops, I'm doing bi-weekly, which leaves that week in between episodes where maybe I can say, Hey, if you missed some of these um, past episodes from the small minded or found podcast. Here are some of our like best episodes ever. So I can recycle some of those older pieces of content, get new listeners or new eyes on it. It's been proven to be successful in the past here on Instagram and on Facebook when I created posts for it. So my hope is that I can efficiently create new posts, get new marketing out there, 
but I'm using things that have already been proven to work in the past by recycling some of these best of episodes. So that's where this concept of cataloging can be super helpful in helping you create a cool for the summer vibe because you're not stressing, you're not chaotic, you're not frantically creating content each and every day. You're starting from a space of here's what has already worked And I am taking this data, I'm taking this information to make smart, efficient decisions going forward. And I'm not saying that every single piece of content that you put out this summer, if you recycle it or reuse it, it will be just as effective. Some things might miss the mark. Sometimes you'll read through a post from last year or two years ago and you'll say, hey, my mind kind of changed on this. I don't know, even though it was successful then, if I feel that same way now or if it would be received the same way now. And that's okay. You don't have to reuse that and you can always freshen it up and just, but it at least gives you a base to work from. So that's where I think that this concept of cataloging, looking back at your insights, looking back at your numbers, and then looking at that content and seeing how can I reduce, reuse, and recycle existing content so that I'm more efficient and just as effective in my marketing going forward. So that is step two, cataloging. And you can catalog here, like we use Meta Business Suite for Facebook and Instagram cataloging. I can do the same thing with my email service. So I can look at Flowdesk. And when I log into my flow desk, here, I should stop sharing for a second, just while I log in so you don't see my login information. And if you're listening on the podcast, you're like, I don't care because I can't see the screen anyway. I'm like, I get it, man. Um, Okay. So if I'm logging into my flow desk here, and while I'm here, I'm going to log into my Libsyn too, which is my podcast host. So I can catalog from all of the platforms that I'm on here. And what I'm looking at is analytics. This is a new feature here on Flowdesk. If you're someone who's used Flowdesk for a while now, this analytics is new. And we can look at subscriber growth. We can look at subscriber activity. We can look at some of the segments that got the most. I would start here with the segments and say, okay, what segments have people wanted to sign up for? And that can inform my decision-making going forward and the content that I create around. If I look at my Libsyn data, I can run my, I can look at my analytics as well and say, what was the most successful month for me in recent years? What were some of those episodes that ran that month? Or I can, again, start a new series and say, hey, here, we're going to re-air the 10 most popular episodes of all time. And those can get me through the summer uh, in those bi-weekly episode formats. So there's a lot that you can do here just simply by cataloging the data for what you've already produced for your business marketing. And again, in your workbook, you can use this too. So your catalog page of your workbook says, what in, what do the insights tell me that my followers enjoy? What are some themes that I want to share out again this summer to drive business? And then the last thing here under cataloging, which we didn't cover a whole lot, but that's really important as we go forward, is this concept of legacy content. So what is a big piece of content that I can create and then I can splinter off throughout my marketing for the remainder of my marketing efforts? So for example, if I have a really great podcast episode, So I can start by cataloging what is the most popular episode of the podcast. So let's see. Okay, if I click here, it'll sort it by most popular. So here's my top one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. So these are my top 10. And what I can do here is say, okay, this most popular episode was The Gift of Music with Callie Fitzgerald. This aired back in March of 2022. And what I can do is like, if I want to make my marketing sing this summer, and we already know that people respond to my podcast episode drop marketing. So I can take this episode and maybe say on Monday, I share out the new podcast episode. On Tuesday, I can share quotes from that episode because I already have that created. If I go back into my meta business suite, I can go to this content tab.
And right here, I can search podcast. And then it brings up various posts that say podcast in it. And so I can look back at some of these posts that I've created and say, all right, what are the graphics I already have? What are the captions I've already written? And I'm going to have to update this date range too. So now it's pulling up these former podcast episodes and I can just go in and I could legit just like find some of those podcast posts and I could say, okay, here's the post that was so successful when I ran it last year. Now what I want to do is just reuse that same post and you guys, there's no shame in this game. People do not remember if you posted something three months ago, they don't remember it long enough to say, oh my gosh, she just posted about that three months ago. I can't believe she's recycling it. Don't worry about it. So what I can do is literally just copy the caption here. And then in my planner of, again, Meta Business Suite is where I do all of my scheduling and posting for social media. I can just paste this into a brand new post. And so if I take that big piece of content, a single podcast, I could say, okay, I'm sharing the podcast episode on Monday. On Tuesday, I'm sharing the behind the scenes, like the feature of that business. Sorry, podcast listeners, you're probably like, Molly, you are just like talking. Stop, start, stop, start. I know, I get it. I'm trying to demonstrate and create the podcast in real time. But here I can just paste it into a new post and I can schedule that for Tuesday. Maybe on Wednesday, I will, of each week, I'll say, here's some action steps from the podcast. So I pick one thing from that episode that I think people need to take an action on. On Thursday, maybe I do a feature of a new product or service or way people can work with me in the summer months. And then I don't post Friday, Saturday, Sunday. But that is going to be like a rough schedule that takes one big piece of content. For me, it would be the podcast. And then it breaks it down into several different days of content so that I'm spending the majority of my efforts and my energy into creating that big piece of content. And then I'm spending less energy on those subsequent days. So Again, that's just another method or another strategy for like really doing less, but still speaking to themes and formats that you have been proven to get response and reaction from your audience. Okay. All right. So we've covered the first two C's, clarity and catalog. The third C is creating. So I don't create new content right away because I want to know what do I already have? It's going to be a more efficient use of my time if I start from a place of knowing what works and of reusing content that's already been created. Then with what's left in my content calendar or with the time that I have available to me that day or that week, that's where I can really spend some time creating. Now, it's important that before we create, first we spend a little time getting amped up getting our vibe right, then we're going to choose a format that fits best. And then we're as much as possible going to batch out content. So if you followed me for any amount of time, you've heard me talk about this um, emotions ladder concept. I learned this last year from Susie Holman. Um, but these emotions and these feelings that we have as human experience, they these emotions emit certain vibrations from us out into the universe. And now if that sounds woo-woo, I hear you guys, but I also know that like there is a reason when I throw a pebble into a pond that there are ripples that go out and out and out and out and out and out. Even though the rock or the pebble landed in one spot, the energy was transmitted out from beyond where that pebble dropped. And that is proof positive that energy moves. And when we have joy, when we're super happy, when we are passionate about something, it's not just the words that we use that share that joy or that passion with the people around us. It is our body language. It is our 
the excitement in our eyeballs. It is the tone we use in our voice. It is the hand movements and gestures that we use. It's the way our posture carries us. And it is the vibration that our bodies are emitting in real time. I've used this example before, but I'll use it again. We've all walked into rooms where we have opened a door. There's two people there. And we like, without a word, we're like, oh my gosh, something just went down. And I feel like I wish I could go back in time two minutes and just not even come into this room because you could cut the tension with a knife. We've also walked into a room like a wedding reception where you can feel the joy, like it's palpable in the room. And so those vibrations, those energetics can be felt. And so when we go to create marketing content for our business, if we look at what we're creating from a passionate, enthusiastic sense of service, we're going to be creating content that has that joyful, passionate vibration, and it will be magnetizing and it will attract people in ways that are different from if we are creating content from a place of annoyance or frustration or desperation or shame, or guilt, or any of those lower vibrating emotions. The lowest vibrating emotion that you can feel is shame or powerlessness. So if you are in a sense of, well, I don't know why I'm creating this because nobody engages with it anyway, you might as well save yourself the time and not create any content from that mindset because the vibration of the energy you're bringing to the table with that content creation is going to actively repel people. We've all seen those thirsty, right? To use the words that the kids use, those thirst traps, those, I mean, oh gosh, no, I'm using the wrong thing. We should probably cut that part. Um, but like there are those thirsty posts or there's those ones where people will like vaguely talk about something, but they won't say exactly the point that they want to make. And you're like, okay, somebody is feeling a little desperate right now, or somebody is feeling a little jealous. And you can feel that energy from the post, even if it doesn't have a picture, it doesn't have a name associated with it. You can just feel it. And when we create content on behalf of our businesses, when we're creating new content, I want you to do what you can to actively get your energy up so that the energy we're spending, the time we're spending, the resources that we're spending are coming from a place of high vibration instead of this place of obligation or low vibration, because I want us to be maximizing our time this summer. So Think about yourself and what actively gets you feeling good. Maybe it's a quick walk outside. Maybe it's just going and soaking up the sun on the deck for a couple minutes. Maybe it's moving your body and getting a quick like five minute hit in. Maybe it's listening to your favorite song. I know like if I can belt out Taylor Swift all too well, it just like changes my mood and I'm like, hell yes, I'm ready to go here. So what can you do to bring your energy up? So before you even create content, amp up the vibration, get to a place, do your best to get to a place of, even if you can't get to joy or passion, like positive belief is still a high vibe emotion. Gratitude is a high vibe emotion. Hopefulness is a high vibe emotion. Contentment is a high vibe emotion. So do your best to just move yourself up a couple rungs of this high vibration energy ladder. And this will help you during your content creation process. I also want you to think about creating from a place of quality versus quantity. Now, I know that there is this prevailing methodology among social media that you need to just be producing, 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 producing at a high volume so that you can stay relevant. But I do not subscribe to that methodology at all. I think that what is most important is being authentic. And with authentic quality content, even if you're only doing one post per week, that is going to be received so much differently than if you shoot out 10 posts a day that are just like filler content. There, If you're creating from an energetic space of just like posting to post, like I just got to get this done. It doesn't matter how many posts you put out. When you have that energy to it, people are not going to pay attention. But if you create like a post that speaks to the heart, if you are creating something that speaks to a, a timely message or you're like inspired by a recent interaction with a client or a customer and you're like, I just have to go write this down and share it. 
Like that is quality. That is something that people pay attention to. And because you're coming from a place of like hopefulness and what could be and passion. And so what I want you to think about in addition to getting your energy up is knowing that I don't need to create a million pieces of content to be successful this summer. I just need to create a handful of really quality, authentic pieces. And especially thinking about it from this space of like that legacy content that we talked about in the cataloging phase of today's presentation. If you can just spend your energy kicking out like a few, like one piece of legacy content per month, whether that's a blog, a YouTube video, or a podcast, like just one high quality, high value piece of content that you can then break into smaller pieces of content that is going to be a huge game changer for your business's marketing approach because you're focusing your energy. You're really just like getting honed in on this one really quality piece. And then it can get repurposed into these other smaller pieces rather than feeling like I've got to create a post every day and I don't even know 30 different things I can talk about. It'll really help you when you think about legacy content from a quality, authentic perspective. And then it really narrows down, okay, I just have to create one really good thing and we'll build from there. So then when you're creating, I want you to create, this is the wrong slide, all of a sudden in the middle of my presentation. When you're creating, I want you to think about like what's working right now on social media, for example, is things that are really candid. I think that speaks to the people's desire to want that authentic interaction and connection. Um, I think I found that like candid pictures that are not perfect are outperforming like just headshot after headshot after headshot, especially on the Instagram side. Um, after several years of hearing that reels and TikToks are the only way to market your business, I really feel like that is coming back around. The most popular reels that I've done for myself and clients in recent months have not been the ones that are overly produced, that took a lot of time, that took me like memorizing a dance or lip syncing a song. It's the ones that are really just like a B-roll image, which means just like any video that you have on your camera roll, and then putting a thoughtful caption or a thoughtful text bubble over top. And it's really bringing it back to using social media to be social and to be authentic. And so when we're creating new content, again, getting that energy up, focusing on quality, not just quantity. And when you're thinking about formatting, I really do think that people are connecting with those authentic kinds of formats. So the B-roll reels with just the really um, like connection-based captions or text bubbles, um, those candid photos are working. And then any place that you can tell a story. And if you're somebody who doesn't feel like you can tell a story, we all have stories. So start from a place of like, Tell me about a time, like, let's say that one of the themes for the summer of your marketing, you want to get more people again, let's go back to like the one-on-one -on -one scenario of that online service provider. So that online service provider wants to drive sales around one-on-one -on -one, uh, appointments. So they want, I would encourage that person to tell stories about one-on-one -on -one transformations. So rather than say, oh, this one time in a group program, I was speaking in front of a group and this is what we talked about. Nope. What we're going to do if we want to drive one-on-one -on -one sales is say, okay, I had a client who had this problem. We had a 90 minute session where we dug into blah, 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 blah. And here's what the result was. Okay. And even if you're not an online service provider, there are still ways that you can do this for your business. So for example, I just did a post for my grading and excavating client earlier this morning and they, we told a story. So they want to drive summer services. One of their summer services is helping farmers and re um, structuring their property for water runoff. And so we told a story and we said, uh, we had a picture and it said, okay, here, this water is draining poorly. Check back tomorrow to see what we did. And then I told a story about the farmer and how there was the water wasn't running off correctly. It was leading to ditches forming and just a mess on the farm. And then our team came in and they looked at the situation and they assessed it and said, this is what we need to do. And so then we included photos of what the team did and the final result. And so that ultimately told a story 
even though it wasn't like a one-on-one -on -one online business scenario where you're sitting across the table from somebody and you're like talking about feelings, you can still show these transformations, even if you are a tradesperson or even if you are a product-based business. It's just a matter of looking for when was there a time that I helped somebody achieve the goal that they had and that goal aligns with your theme and your goals for the month or for the summer. I hope that makes sense. All right. Last topic. So we went through clarity, catalog, create. And now we're going to talk about convert, aka why are we using social media? Where are we using social media? And how can that help us this summer? So what I want you to do to start with getting to this conversion mentality, why do we even do what we do? It's really hard to get people to buy from us or to work with us when we don't have that clear understanding of why we're doing this anyway. If you need some more motivation and inspiration around this, I highly suggest going to the Golden Circle um, YouTube video with Simon Sinek, and he talks about how people can really um, identify what it is they do. They can tell you how they do it, but a lot of businesses have a hard time defining why they do it. And even harder, a lot of businesses have employees who can't say why they do what they do. And when we can't define that, it's hard to communicate the value to potential clients, customers, and prospective buyers. And so we might sell cars at a car dealership. That's the what. And how do we do this? We have a used car lot. We list it on Facebook. We share it on Facebook Marketplace. We put it in the local newspaper. But why do we do used car sales? Oh, because we recognize that there's a lot of cost savings when people can purchase a quality car that is one or two years old. And we want to bring those valuable vehicles that are more cost effective to the people in our community. Or let's say that we have a restaurant. So what do we do? We make pies. Why do we do it? Because pies are good and we have a great recipe that's homemade. Wait, I did that wrong. Ah, back up. <laughs> so what do we do? We make pies. How do we do it? We have a recipe that we follow. Why do we do it? Because make eating pie is a family memory of ours from time that we spent with our grandma. We know that other people have these memories when they can gather around a really delicious pie and we want to be part of making memories for the future. And so sometimes that why can be a little fluffy, but a lot of times it connects to a deeper part of our story or an experience that we had. And it really taps into that emotion that a lot of times in business, we don't want to talk about. We would rather talk about the what we do and the how we do it. But the why is what gets people to connect with us and ultimately do business with us. Remember, people do business with people and they don't necessarily just buy because of the price or because of the promises. They buy because of the gut feeling they have when they hear you speak and they see what you do and they understand why the why that underlies all of it. So when you can define why you do what you do and you can communicate that through your marketing, that is going to be gold in making these conversions happen this summer. And sometimes defining this why is going to be that silver bullet that like helps you really speed up all of these other aspects of your marketing. Because when you understand that why, it makes the other pieces fall into place faster, more efficiently, and make more sense. So people do business with people and it takes them going from knowing about you, being aware of what you do to liking what you do and liking you and your team and how you do what you do. And then trusting you enough to give you their credit card, give you their purchase information and actually do the dang thing. So this is where social media comes in. That's step one, getting to know you, building awareness. This is where social media can be your best friend. It's like word of mouth on steroids because social media can spread words so fast and it can help people really get a sense of who we are and how we do things. And I want you to remember that social media doesn't, again, have to be that shiny end product. 
especially right now, people want authentic. They want quality. They want to see behind the scenes and they want to understand why you do what you do. And so in our social media um, assets, we can really take off this armor that we might want to put on. We can let go of this sense of how everything needs to be perfect and look just so. Because really right now, people just want the raw, authentic version of you and, and your business. And so use that to your advantage on social media. Share your why. Connect with people and really like send them messages, respond to their comments, be a human being, be a person and get people to just know you and know who you are and what you do. Now, when we go into know and then like, so we're moving them from just knowing about us to starting to like who we are and what we do. We can continue to do that through social media. We can also move them through to the next channel. This is called a nurture sequence. So they might get to know us on social media where they're spending their time. And then we want them to like us by getting on our email list, maybe subscribing to our podcast, watching a video, attending a free workshop, uh, reading a blog, joining a text list, things like that. That's moving them through this nurture sequence because it's getting them to spend more time with us and know us a little bit more. It's similar to dating where maybe like, you know, these days kids are just like talking to one another. So they're texting. But they then decide after a few hundred texts to go on an actual date. And then that's what we're doing here. So social media is where we're just like talking to each other, right? Now we're saying, okay, you want to take this relationship a little bit further? Maybe we set up a date, you know, get on my email list and you'll hear from me every week at this certain time. Or, you know, listen to my podcast and subscribe. You'll get more information from me on this certain day on this certain time. And so it's moving them through, it's nurturing them so they know us and then they begin to like us. And then the last step and the last objective of our marketing is to get them to trust us and ultimately make that purchase. And so social media is what starts it all. So I want you to have that social media component to your marketing this summer, but also start to think about what is that next step? What is that next piece of the nurturing process where I'm really getting them to like me? And again, social media can play that part, But also, this is where you can open it up to an email subscription. This is where you can open it up to that legacy piece of content, whether it's a YouTube series, a blog, or a podcast, so that you can focus your energy and your efforts into one main piece of content that then you break down into smaller pieces. And then we get them to trust us enough to purchase us because they have done the due diligence, they've learned about us, they understand our why, they like why and how we do what we do, and now they're ready to buy. We're just giving them a lot of opportunities to get to know us. And repeat. And again, don't be afraid to go back and follow this process of getting clear about what you want, cataloging what you already have, reducing, reusing, and recycling through these various channels. And then you can create where you have goals and then you convert by following this no like trust process. Remember that this summer, I just threw a whole bunch of information at you, but it all goes back to what are your big goals? What are the most important things to you? And allowing yourself to say yes to less and work in a really focused way and using this clarity cataloging, then creating and converting system to help you efficiently create more marketing assets or not more marketing assets, but to more efficiently create marketing assets or reuse marketing assets so that people are knowing, liking, and trusting you all summer long without you having the pressure, the obligation, and the time commitment of creating all of this content from scratch. Okay. And when we can do this really thoughtfully and intentionally, not only does it save us time and it brings us back to that concept of like time freedom, but it also allows us to feel like what we're doing is going to make a difference. It's going to get results because when we're throwing spaghetti at the wall, it can feel like, why am I doing this anyway? But when we understand at the beginning what our goal is and we can structure our marketing so that it supports that goal, then it really helps us see, okay, I'm creating this social media post so that it drives people to my email list. And then that email is going to talk about my one-on-one consulting services for my social media business. And then 
Hopefully I get a conversion. And then I'll begin the next social media post about, oh, this is the podcast guest that we had that talked about social media. And then I can create a quote from that podcast. And then I can say, hey, if you want more social media tips that are specific to your business, book a one-on-one call with me. And so then I can structure all of my marketing so that it's driving people to the same common goal. And it's not just throwing spaghetti at the wall. It helps me feel like what I'm doing is productive and it's not just busy work. Okay, guys, we covered a lot of ground in this time, and I hope that it makes sense. Again, if you're listening on the podcast while you were driving, I would highly suggest that you go check out the video, get that workbook download so you can fill it out for yourself. Um, Yeah, and I hope that you can have a cool summer as well. Uh, As we go ahead with the podcast here, as we go ahead with MKM, again, I'm saying yes to less. And so I'll be around in the mornings. I will be around every other week with a new podcast for you. And I encourage you to reach out, but if it takes me a couple of days to respond, don't, don't be worried. I'm just really staying focused and intentional this summer because I want to maximize that time and that time freedom that entrepreneurship and small business ownership can allow for us. Okay. Have a great summer. You guys, I will be back with more. And again, thank you so much for being here.